Give thanks to the Lord for all he's done. And that includes the gift of godly mothers. And this is In The Moment. I'm your host, Reverend Ricky Allen Jr. Thanking you as always on this lovely day the Lord has made. And wherever you are, whatever you're doing, I pray that you have the Lord Jesus Christ out front leading the way. And I also hope that you have called your mother and wished her a happy Mother's Day. You know, um, our mothers in the kingdom are an important part of how we got to where we are right now because God blessed us with some godly praying mothers out here. So now, what happens if you didn't have a mother like that? What happens if you did not have that experience? Well, here's what I want you to do. I want you to go on social media. I want you to find your neighbor, whoever you know who had a mothering experience that you benefited from as a child or as an adult. And I want you to thank them for coming alongside you when you felt like you had been left alone. I want you to Thank them for loving on you when you may have felt unloved. Whatever whatever part of your mothering experience or your motherhood experience, there's a mother out there that you can encourage that maybe can encourage you as well. So don't worry about it. It's going to be okay. God loves you and we do too. And I want to give a special Mother's Day shout out to my own wife, Nicole. We love you. Me and the boys love you. And as our sons grow into godly adults, I just thank God that you're here with us showing them the characteristics of what a good godly mother is so they can find good godly women to find hopefully a godly family in that woman for her to be a godly mother. And I also want to thank God for my own mother, the Reverend Dr. Irene Allen down in Kenbridge, Virginia, who pastors Mount Gazarene Baptist Church. Um, happy Mother's Day to you. And I pray that you are blessed on this special day, as well as to my sisters, as well as to my cousins and to all of those who know old Pastor Rick here. I want to say happy Mother's Day to you you and we love you and with that being said let's get started our morning scripture comes from of course proverbs 31 uh, 25 through 29 which reads she is clothed with strength and dignity she can laugh at the days to come she speaks with wisdom and faithful instruction is on her tongue she watches over the affairs of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness her children arise and call her blessed her husband also, and he praises her. Many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. Amen. And, and the world is so much better knowing that we have godly women standing in the gap, praying for the children of this world, taking care of their own children, the affairs of the household. You do so many things. We can't honestly list everything off but we want to let you know that we appreciate everything you do for the kingdom as well as for the home and with that being said let's pray for our mothers out here today heavenly father we thank you for our godly mothers lord we know there are mothers out there who did not have that experience we recognize them today and they're and they're working hard lord we recognize the mothers who are bitter at their own mothers we recognize them today. We ask you to bring them peace in their hearts and provide a pathway of reconciliation one day, but let it be according to your will. Lord, we recognize those mothers who work hard, who may feel as if though it's not enough. Let them know that you're watching and you're cheering them on. Lord, we thank those mothers who have taken on the responsibilities of tending to children that might not even be theirs, for they have extended the reach of the blessing that you've given them in understanding what godly motherhood is. And there are so many different types of mothers out there, Lord, but we ask you right now in the name of Jesus Christ to put your hands around all of them. Reveal yourself to those who may not know you and in, in, enlighten and strengthen those who walk with you every day. These and all things we ask in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. All right. And today our topic is, of course, a Mother's Day topic. What were you expecting? We're going to finish up our discussion on Hezekiah next week. But this week we're going to pause and thank God for these praying mothers. And that's our topic. Thank God for praying mothers. If you had a praying mother, if you had a praying 
grandmother, if you had a praying godmother, thank God for our praying mothers out here because I don't know where we'd be if we didn't have our praying mothers out here. Uh, God is so good by bringing along someone who can have those godly maternal instincts to pass along to a generation that needs the Lord, and especially those who accept the Lord that can help other folks accept the Lord. But it begins with a praying mama. You know, so I, we, we're not forgetting the dads. We're going to talk about you on Father's Day, of course. But today we're going to talk about these praying mamas that we are thanking God for right here in 2024. And our text comes from 2 Timothy 1, 5 through 6. 2 Timothy 1, 5 through 6 reads as follows. I am reminded of your sincere faith, which first lived in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice. And I am persuaded now lives in you also. For this reason, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the reading of your already blessed word. We thank you for these praying mamas out here. Uh, keep them safe. Keep them in your hands and help them share this hope we have to other ladies out there that may not know you, that but neither know you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. We're living in a time where there are absentee fathers and also ineffective mothers, leaving children to fend for themselves. And as a result, there are generations rising that desire no relationship with Jesus Christ, living in darkness, which leads to despair, depravity, and destruction. But then there are those praying mothers of God who stand in the gap working to come alongside these ladies and give this hope, share this hope that we have in Jesus Christ. We recognize you every day, but today we really zero in to let all of our praying mothers know that we love you, we see you, we hear you, and we're praying for you just as much as you're praying for everybody else. What do you do in God's kingdom when you don't have a praying mother, we'll never find out because in God's kingdom, we have praying mothers. And what you do in there cannot be put into a few words, but we'll make every attempt to bring some perspective as to why we thank God every day for our praying mothers. The first part I want you to look at is, look in um, verse five here. See, Paul is uh, looking in encouraging Timothy, he of course he's been uh, he considers Timothy a spiritual son. We read that in uh, First Timothy. Here in Second Timothy, he's recognizing the faith that Timothy Timothy has, but he's looking at it from the understanding of where it came from. We see in verse five here, uh, the first part it says, "I am reminded of your sincere faith." So if it wasn't for praying mothers, Paul would not have the spiritual citation of Timothy's face. faith. What is a citation? If you've done some uh, research papers, if you have done anything like that, uh, you have a citation. This citation recognizes that the information that you're saying in that particular part of the paper is sourced from another place. It's not you. You have sourced that information to strengthen your argument in your research paper. And that is what we see here with the Apostle Paul. What Paul here is saying is that he is understanding what that citation is. The faith of a praying grandmother, the faith of a praying mother, which turns de a developed man of God into someone completely effective, ready to receive instruction, ready to go work for the kingdom. When builders develop buildings, they spend a great deal of time making sure the foundation is laid correctly. I can recall times when I worked in construction where we would be laying down everything for a foundation and then we would go around with the laser making sure everything was laid evenly and spread it to ensure no cracks were going to be in that foundation in the future. When you take time to lay a proper foundation, which is faith in Jesus Christ, spreading the word of God, making sure it spreads evenly on all areas of your child's life, God can build on that foundation something strong and operational. The problem with many people is the foundation was created on a spiritually shoddy material and because the material used for the foundation they laid was already suspicious, 
it didn't really, it can't hold anything. It can't support anything. And then it starts cracking. The walls start cracking. You might ask, well, Pastor, how can this be? If you think your foundation is built because you got the Last Supper painting on your wall or a Bible in the living room you don't open, you have not built a strong foundation. Your foundation is uh, still shaky. If you're not talking to Jesus Christ and to your children and the children don't even hear about Jesus in the house until Sunday and maybe a Bible study on Wednesday and you're depending on church time to build foundation, your foundation is still shoddy. If the foundation was not laid properly, Timothy might not have developed such a robust and genuine faith. His, his foundation in faith was shaped significantly by the effects of some praying mamas that knew the Lord. And when you get some praying mamas, you get the fruits of the Spirit, Galatians 5, 20 through to 23, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. And because there is no law to stand against the Holy Spirit, you'll know a praying mama from a woman who simply had a child. How do we know Paul has a spiritual citation that he has identified in Timothy's faith? The verse continues, which first lived in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice, and I am being I am persuaded now lives in you also. So if it wasn't for praying mothers, the legacy of faith seen in Timothy's life, a sincere faith that was first evident in his grandmother Lois and then his mother Eunice would not have been as influential and visible. And how do we know Timothy's faith is influential and visible? Because you're not going to spend time training any future preacher or preacher of the word on the inner workings of ministry if the foundation of faith in Jesus Christ has not been established. This is intergenerational transmission of faith that speaks to the powerful role of mothers and grandmothers in nurturing and sustaining spiritual beliefs and a relationship with Jesus Christ. And then, and we don't need the details we see the results of praying mamas through the works of Timothy. We see here in verse six, where it says, for this reason. If it wasn't for praying mothers, the reasons Paul had for encouraging Timothy might have been different or less compelling. Paul saw the faith of praying mamas. He saw the presence of a strong faith lineage in Timothy's life that provided a strong basis for further spiritual encouragement and development. Paul could see it. Now, why is it important? Because you want to know, you want to know, you need to know that not only does it take a village to raise a child, but it takes some praying mamas who understand how to raise that child under the banner of Jesus Christ. James 1, do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves, do what it says. So when praying mamas do what the word says, it cannot, it cannot help but be seen in the children. And when it's seen in the children, other Christians are going to see it and other non-believers are going to see it. And they know that they know there's a praying mama in the distance. When Satan comes, when people come with false gods, they will know that a child is infused with the word of God because a praying mama is in the distance. And then we get to verse six, where it says, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God. If it wasn't for praying mothers, the ability to light the fire or fan the flame, the gift of God would be easier said than done. I don't know if you've ever started a campfire, but everyone knows wood with the right conditions equals starting a fire easier and faster. But the wood that's damp and wet takes longer because you got to it's got to get set to the side and it has to be tended to with putting the right conditions around that wood to be ready 
to light the fire and fan the flame. In this case, the gift of God has been placed in a condition that is ready for ignition. And in that ignition, Paul helps Timothy launch an active stern ministry that represents the Lord effectively. This gift of God through ministry would not be easy if there were not praying mamas standing in the gap. Now, I'm sure some of you have seen your children be identified for different achievements and by different people around you. Let it be known that without your prayers, you don't get that product. Their God-given gifts will be covered in sin, covered in distractions, covered in the world creep. But the gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ. That's the only way to heaven is through Jesus. And when you share the truth of the matter with your children, you get a godly response. So when you're a praying mama, when you have a praying mama in the house, you're turning it over to Christ, but you're doing your job as a believer as well. And when you serve the Lord with all your heart and lean not to on your own understanding and in all your ways submit to him, knowing that he will make your path straight, Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. I'm here to tell you all you my praying mamas today that keep praying because the Lord hears your prayers and the children see you pray and they see your faith. And when they see your faith, it helps them understand faith. And when they understand your faith, they will reach out for their own relationship with the God you serve. And when they reach out for the God you serve, they get, they get a meet and greet with Jesus Christ. And because you responded to the redemptive work of Jesus Christ the right way, and that is through knowing you're a sinner that needed saving, accepting the Lord Jesus Christ in your life, Lord of your house, Lord over your everything. And when you have surrendered it all, God can operate. God gets the glory and you get the benefit of a generation after you covered in prayer, covered by the blood of the lamb and operating in their personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And then verse six also says this, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. The foundation laid by Timothy's mother and grandmother likely made him more receptive to spiritual growth and empowerment. The only thing Paul had to do was help him bring it out. And that could be done because of how fertile the ground was, that being Timothy. Paul is saying here that the gift of God, which we know is his active ministry ordained by Paul, that's the laying of hands portion. We understand the laying of hands is, is a symbolic act to confer blessing, authority, or a particular spiritual gift. It's done this day in the church. It's when we ordain our deacons, our ministers, our missionaries, we lay hands on them. Don't act like you don't know. You know this. It's a practice rooted where the apostles laid hands on believers to impart the Holy Spirit or to dedicate them to God's service. But to all my praying mamas out there, though, you don't get here without your preparation and receptiveness. You praying mamas, with your preparation, with your receptiveness to the word has made the way for a generation that will all also be prepared and ready to receive the word. You are instrumental in shaping character and faith, making your children a suitable vessel for the responsibilities of kingdom work through the Holy Spirit. We thank God for praying mothers. We don't get here without your spiritual foundation. By instilling God's word in your child, around your child, the foundation is laid for God to build on for the glorification of his kingdom and for your benefit of knowing that when your time comes and you leave this earth, you know that because you submitted to God's word, was obedient in your actions, trusted in the Lord. Your child or children have been raised in the under the authority of Christ Jesus and understand that if they go astray, they can't say they didn't have a praying mama. Use a thousand excuses, but the one thing they can't say is, I did not have a praying mama. You did have a praying mama. You made choices. And because of the choices you made, you can't blame it on mama. You can't blame it on me, ma. You can only look at yourself because a foundation was laid for you. 
And you're the one, child, grown adult, you're the one that decided you was going to go the other way. But I thank God in Christ Jesus that there is still time for you to turn back. Just like it's time for all of our mothers out there who may not know the Lord or turned away from the Lord for whatever reason, got um, you know, carried away by some silly man that, d that didn't know the Lord and he took you out of fellowship with God, you still have time today to turn back. As long as you're breathing, there is time. Keep that in mind, please. And if you're here and you don't even know the Lord, maybe uh, your relationship with Jesus Christ is not strong and maybe you haven't been praying uh, like a praying mother should. Well, I'm here to tell you one more time, you have time. I'm here to tell you today, if you know the Lord, but did not walk with him because you thought that just knowing him was enough, that just reading your Bible was enough, today's a day you can turn it around knowing that repentance is just a hand reach away because the Bible tells me in John 15 5 I am the vine you are the branches if you remain in me and I in you you will bear much fruit apart from me you can do nothing and maybe you have been apart from him and wondering why things have not worked out for you or your family you're wondering why the children are struggling. You're wondering why you're not seeing in them what you're seeing in all the other mother's children. Because by human, you compare yourself to everybody else. We know it. Here's the key. The key is Jesus Christ. Maybe, maybe you need to talk to these mothers who are blessed with these children who are doing well. Find out what the source is. That way you can find out a proper Christian example of what it's like to live in the kingdom. Because there are a lot of good people out there. There are a lot of good mothers out there, by the way, who do not know the Lord and are doing just fine. That is very true. That can happen. That can occur. That does occur. But at the end of the day, they will all go to hell. And I'm sorry to tell you that. Being good is not good enough. You must know the Lord Jesus Christ. It doesn't matter how fast you get to the bag. It doesn't matter uh, how much education you have. It doesn't matter how independent and strong you are. You are still a slave to sin. The chain is still on you and you can easily be swayed by some silly man around the corner any day of the week because you do not have the gift of the Holy Spirit imparted to you when you come into a relationship with Jesus Christ. It's only a matter of time before you fall. Only a matter of time. And I'm not wishing this on no, no mama out there. I'm, I'm not. I am imparting basic truth that is not being told to our mothers out here because they're being worshiped in a way that's incorrect. I am here to set the board correct, to point you to the cross, to let you know that everything you have in that child, those gifts that that child has, is a gift of God. And what you need to be doing, what your mama needs to be doing, what your mama's mama needs to be doing is fanning the flames so that that child can fan the flames of that gift of God that's brought out. But it begins with praying. I need you to be a praying mama, not just a good mama, but a praying godly mother who knows the Lord for herself, who can stand Stand on her own two feet, wearing the armor of God for herself, who understands that the gifts of the spirit only come when you have the spirit, the Holy Spirit, given when we accept the Lord Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. So if you desire to bear good fruit, you got to be a branch on the tree of God. And when that happens, you'll see why being a praying mama makes all the difference in your children and in yourself. Because when you look back and see what the glory of God has done in your life and is doing in your life and will do in your life. And when you're doing it with other praying mamas who are praying for mamas and children, and they watched them thrive and come to the Lord Jesus Christ. 
And then you watch those mamas impart the word of God onto their children. This is how we get to where we need to be as a people, as a world. And you will be saying what I am saying right now. You won't be able to help yourself. Thank God for praying mothers. Now, if you're out there and you need prayer, you don't know where to start. And you, you know that you may have not been always in the right. Maybe you parted ways with God years ago and you're ready to come back to the kingdom. Maybe you never knew God and maybe you have no relationship with Jesus Christ. I want you to shoot me an email at get-prayer.com. Submit right there on the site and let us reach out to you in prayer and in love, in clarity and in love, and make sure that you know who Jesus Christ is for yourself first before we worry about what your kid is doing. Because if you can't help yourself, how can you help your child? Even on an airplane, they tell you, if you can't, you gotta put the mask on yourself first and be able to breathe before you put it on anybody else you care for. And that's just truth. And it makes perfect sense because God makes perfect sense. And we want you to be a part of that. So until next time, may God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. And God willing, we'll speak to you next week. So all my mothers out there, go out there, have a great lunch or a great dinner. And fathers and kids, I hope you got something special ready for them. Because I'm there too. I got to get, get something together as well. So I do pray that we all recognize our mothers for the achievements they've done. Keep them encouraged. Keep them in prayer as they keep us in prayer. You take care.